Hey there, welcome back to Assistive Technology Part 2 of 2. In this part of the video, we're going to look at high-tech devices. So high-tech devices are characterized by having an electronic component. That component can be, um, you know, a little motor all the way up to super sophisticated computer technology. These devices can be much more difficult to obtain and the price varies obviously, but they can be very expensive. Anything from $50 up to 30 grand. Examples are voice recognition software, computer and computer uh, keyboards and computer access, scanning programs and text to voice devices and electric wheelchair. So you can see that they, um, that they, uh, that they run the gamut, right? So it's not all computer stuff, um, but it includes anything that has an electronic component. We're going to start by looking at alternative and augmentative communication, AAC, and computer access technology, or CAT. So this is communication that does not require speech and can be individualized to the unique needs of the child. So we're talking about kids who are nonverbal but need a method of communication. It can take the form of either high or low tech devices. So I'm going to show you both, but um, there are some very high tech options. And OT generally collaborates with speech and language pathologist or SLP to select and train the student in these devices. And in some places, there will be um, an AAC and CAT specialist, and that's all that that person does. So that is um, a potential uh, job position for an OT that's trained in that area or a speech and language pathologist. Okay, so we're going to start off with like low tech, right? So the, the child could have a, a, a head stick or a mouth stick and a communication board like what you see on the left here and they could just point to stuff right oh i um i want uh oh this one is um this one is in german um <laughs> so uh i want cabbage i want my dog right um so they're just pointing to a, a screen of things. Now on the right, you see that um, there are buttons that are going to advance the different pictures, and there's a method of selecting the picture that you want, right? So you scan and select. Um, there's also voice recognition software, and voice recognition allows the user to speak to the computer instead of using a keyboard or mouse to input data or control computer functions. So um, Dragon Naturally Speaking is one way that um, children and adults, for that matter, can access computers just by speaking to it. Um, it's kind of funny because... Um, <laughs> because uh, you know, Siri and um, and uh, any kind of like environmental control um, that uh, that a person uses in their house um, also is this voice recognition software, right? So we've come head and and shoulders um, forward with our ability, uh, our abilities, and our capabilities in terms of voice recognition software. Um, so voice recognition can build confidence. It can allow the individual to experience a new way to engage with their computer and also to control their environment. Um, there's a video linked for you that um, you can watch, and we may watch some of them in class if we have time, um, but I'd love for you to watch some of the videos. They go throughout this section so that you can actually see a person using some of this software. And, uh, you know, middle-aged lady moment, um, Alexa is who controls our houses now, right? So Alexa is voice recognition software. Yay for me for word finding. All right. Um, next up, word prediction software. So word prediction is included in smartphones and other digital devices. We call it autocorrect, right? It reduces the number of keystrokes that the student or the child types. It improves the quality and level of written work. It may lessen frustration with writing. And, um, you know, depending on the device, we may need to create a library of words and phrases that are appropriate to the task that the child wants to do. 
So um, there's a website that um, shows a variety of different kinds of word prediction software and how it works. And that's in your presenter notes. Word prediction software, um, this is an example. Uh, so uh, the child's typing on the computer, uh, the screen is on the right, and as you can see, um, she is typing, I go swimming every Saturday, I can SW, and a little dialog box pops up and she just needs to select what it is that she's after. Again, a huge, um, you know, huge change um, because we can just do this now. Yeah, my videos uh, refuse to embed and record. Um, so this is word prediction using co-writer and a smart pen. And this young man is named Jared. There's a YouTube video. They're all very short. Like I said, if we have time, we'll watch them in class. Um, but it's, uh, it's a great example of how this works in practice. Next up are keyboards. So QWERTY and non-QWERTY. And um, you're probably familiar that QWERTY simply means the arrangement of letters, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, um, across the top left, right? Um, so keyboards uh, can be arranged that way or they can be arranged in an ABC fashion, right? So think about if you're a kid, why in the heck would you want um, QWERTY when you could have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Um, so it's another option. Uh, let's see. Additions can be made to the, key, to the keyboard to add different functionality. Um, we can also have keyboards that have larger letters. They can have bolded letters. They can have key guards. Um, a range of uh, different, um, different shapes of keyboards. So uh, keyboards are another option for high-tech AT. Here's another array, and this one isn't on a typical keyboard, it's on a different type of screen and uh, with some different functionality. Then we have eye gaze technology. And so um, this young man is Fraser, as you can see, and he is um, using eye gaze to engage with his computer. So he has cerebral palsy, it's pretty involved. And so what he's doing is moving his eyes and dwelling and uh, a scanner reads where his eyes dwell and, uh, and that is how he accesses his computer. Dynavox scanning is another type of high-level scanning for um, a child. It uses a head mouse, and sometimes there's even just a head dot that kids can use. Um, and if they have some head movement, they can do scanning as well. This is L and another video. We also have scanning programs. So either direct scanning or step scanning, and those are the two different types. In direct scanning, all the options are present on the screen and the client either points with the finger, body part, or assisted device. The cursor can be moved on the screen to make the choice. With step scanning, the information is given in steps on progressive screens. So step one, the switch is activated to move the highlighter from one button to another to select a specific category. And then when the highlighter is over the button, a second switch is activated to select another screen. Um, so, uh, you know, just um, uh, a variety of different ways of scanning and selecting. And um, there's information in the presenter notes for you about scanning programs. We also want to think um, briefly anyway about cultural factors for assistive technology. So when we talk about culture in terms of pediatrics, we think um, race and ethnicity. We also think socioeconomic status and um, a, a variety of other aspects of, of families that may 
alter how and what they want, need, and are able to access in terms of assistive technology. So finances play a huge role. Along with that is what kind of health insurance do you have, right? Um, familial roles and who is around to help the child, especially with high-tech AT, uh, can be an issue. Social support, knowledge about disabilities and what's possible, um, accepting the amount of assistance from others. So in um, a variety of uh, different cultures, uh, different levels of independence, interdependence, and dependence are acceptable and are the norm. Um, and then there's the importance of uh, independence and physical appearance. So when we use assistive technology, especially some of the high tech, that can either be a good thing or it can be a not so great thing, right? So we want to take that into account. And then the balance of work and play, um, just in terms of uh, you know where that child is in ter- uh, with regard to what they're doing. Are they engaged with schoolwork all the time and, and work being education being the work of kids um, as opposed to playing on assistive technology? So those are just some of the issues. The role of OT in working with uh, AT is as a team member. We also have a role in looking at activities and task analysis with evaluating the context and the environment and providing community resources and support. Um, Here are a couple different, uh, well, one resource with a couple different options uh, available, Parents Helping Parents, um, and here's the website for them. They focus on three main areas, education, adaptive technology, and community and family services. So important to check them out, especially if you're thinking of going into PEDS. That brings us to the end of the lecture. As I said, if we have time, we will definitely watch the videos in class, but they're short, they're interesting, they're easy to watch, easily accessible, so I highly encourage you to um, seek out that information on your own, probably take you about 10 minutes. And um, if you have questions, please jot them down, bring them to class, email me, but uh, don't leave your questions unanswered. All right, that's it for this lecture. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you real soon. Bye now.